Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about um, examples. So we've discussed over the last 11 videos a lot of concepts and basic pathology. Um, so now we're going to try to fit some of them together and kind of use three examples to talk about um, the process. So our first one is ischemic and hypoxic injury. So ischemic means loss of blood flow to a tissue. Hypoxic means loss of or low oxygen to the tissues. So if I have a gland here or a tissue of some of some kind and here is the bloodstream artery flowing by. If I were to occlude to cut off this artery so that no blood could come through, then this tissue or cell or whatever might might undergo ischemia will go under will undergo ischemia and hypoxia. So first let's talk about hypoxia because hypoxia is less damaging than ischemia. Hypoxia or hypoxic injury is just loss of oxygen to a tissue. So what's going to happen if there's no O2? Well, you're going to see a decrease in ATP. So you're going to see a decrease in ATP and you're going to see a decrease in pH. Be why? Because the mitochondria in here it needs oxygen to undergo um, oxidation, oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transport chain to produce ATP. So if you don't have any oxygen you're going to see a decrease in, in ATP and that's going to cause um, cellular swelling because as we've talked about these pumps these pumps will not work so you'll see an increase in swelling. You're also going to see a decrease in pH because like I talked about in the couple of videos ago you can either there's two pathways to produce ATP uh, one of them requires oxygen the other one doesn't if you have no oxygen you're gonna start increasing this pathway to ATP and that's gonna lower your pH because it's a uh, uh, there's lactic acid builds up and so you're gonna you get it's an acid so you're gonna uh, decrease the pH loss of blood flow is a more severe injury because you not only lose oxygen so you have all of this stuff too but you have no nutrients you have no nutrition no nutrition and other factors that dump into other intermediates or other or other kinds of molecules needed to um, undergo ATP um, so that is even a worse a worse situation because also as the cell undergoes respiration or it undergoes processes you're going to dump off wastes and what happens if these wastes accumulate because the blood will take out the wastes and if you can't get these wastes out of here then that's going to cause problems too so ischemia and hypoxic injury Let's move to the next one. Ischemia reperfusion injury. So we understand we just talked about what the process is of ischemia and the reperfusion injury. Um, uh, let's talk about that. So. I'll, again, I'll draw a picture of a blood vessel and a cell over here. This is not proportional, by the way. I mean, the blood vessel is a lot bigger than just one cell. But um, if I block this blood vessel and no, no blood can get through, 
what happens is this cell starts to die, right? And then the mitochondria, some of the membrane might become um, problematic. And leukocytes, so some of these uh, leukocytes, this is a leukocyte, Leu leukocyte. Remember we talked about in the free radical and uh, reactive oxygen species video that leukocytes um, cause free radicals or reactive oxygen species. Well, what happens is, and another another thing too before I go on is that O2 plus four electrons equals H uh, H2O. This is the process that happens inside the mitochondria. This process happens inside the mitochondria. Well, all of these things and. and you can review that video if you want to look at some of the more some more reasons how oxygen species um, or free radicals are created but so as soon as this is uncovered again actually let me use the eraser here so let's say that this is this occlusion is removed and then now blood is um, is moving through these tissues again well oxygen and everything a huge supply of oxygen is going to come into the cell and because the ATP is down there's going to be tons of ATP that's produced and there's going to be a lot of reactions and because leukocytes are already there they're already producing free radicals this is producing free radicals um, you know you have all these ways that free radicals are getting produced so you're going to have tons of free radicals well because of this tissue has already been damaged because of ischemia the mechanisms for taking care of these reaction oxygen species are compromised because the vitamins remember that vitamins um, help um, vitamin C A E and beta carotene those help prevent oxygen species the glutathione I don't know how to spell glutathione just a sec here let me spell it correctly here. Thione. Glutathione. Um, that also helps um, take out um, reactive oxygen species. So the reperfusion injury can actually cause injury can cause more injury so you think that maybe well I need to return blood to the area um, so it can get oxygen and it can get its nutrients well actually by doing that you're actually injuring the tissue more and some of the tissues that are uh, let's say that this cell for example is to the point it hasn't passed the point of no return it has it can still be reversible injury it, it can still fix itself well because now that you've allowed all this oxygen to come back in or this blood flow to come back in it's actually caused it to jump past the point of no return and then now it completes the process of necrosis so ischemia reperfusion injury is um, is uh, catch-22 chemical toxic injury is our last is our last example here so let's say that we have again we have some blood coming in some cell and we have some toxin right here some chemical it will kinda come in here and diffuse and it will bind let's say this is uh, mitochondria here it will bind to the mitochondria and or it will inhibit ATP and then these pumps the, we got the uh, sodium potassium we have the calcium pump these pumps are inhibited and then the cell starts to swell water starts coming in here because there's starts to be an accumulation of these ions and so it wants to try to equal out um, 
how many ions are in here to how many ions are out here, water will try to equalize that. And because there's more in here, water will start dumping in here, trying to expand this outwards so that everything is in osmotic equilibrium. So you start getting the cells starting to swell and that will cause eventually cause necrosis and cause problems um, in the case of cancer. You know you have these cells that are dividing more rapidly than the neighboring cells so cancer drugs are an attempt to try to find out the best chemical or the best, best toxin that will come out and be absorbed by only these cells that are reproducing more rapidly than their adjacent cells. Because you don't want to kill these good cells, you just want to kill the bad cells that have lost its ability to, um, you know, to stop, you know, reproducing so quickly. So, you know, that's the whole po point of these can ke uh, these cancer drugs is to try to find ways to kill this cancer rather than uh, destroying these these new or these good cells. And that's it. We'll see you in the next video.